the first for me. Let's mark this off the bucket list for the crochet bezel. Well, first of all, congratulations on the win. Thank you so much. When you look back at the fight, you've had some time to digest it now. What's your immediate reaction to how you performed and how you, how you came through the fight? Well, um, uh, me, me, Greg Jackson, Mike Winklejohn, and all my training partners uh, at Jackson Wink in Albuquerque pretty much had a, a three-week crash course. We crammed for a test. Um, it was very last minute for me to go out there due to the changes in my personal life um, and changes in my, my training. And um, we got the job done, and we just didn't get the job done. You know, I, I made UFC history um, for the second time. And, uh, you know, it's always sweet to get a submission, you know. Uh, everybody thinks I'm a striker, which I can strike because I was in glory, but that was a little premature. Like, you know, going to glory, I just happened to just happened to do it. Um, but grappling has been consistent for me. Jiu-jitsu, not wrestling, jiu-jitsu. Walk us through the finish, because I think a lot of people were confused exactly what you got him with, it seems like. What, the what arm triangle from what, the bottom. Do you think a lot of that had to do with his fatigue, or were you in tighter than it looked on TV? Um, he threw a bunch of elbows. He, he may have fatigued a little bit, and he was resting. Well, during that wrestling moment, you know, I was able to pop that arm, which was on my neck, because he was putting a lot of pressure on my neck. He was actually trying to, uh, trying to submit me with the pressure on my neck. Uh, but I was able to pop that arm over, and he got it back once, I believe. I mean, it's a little foggy. Um, but, and it was very slippery. But once I was lock it in, actually, I was going to look to possibly try to transition to his back. Because um, usually once you get that arm across his body, you know, I can transition to the back that way. I had, I, w I was in half guard. Got my other hook in. I would have had the hook on the bottom. Transition to the left, I believe, because the cage was on my right. Um, but I squeezed, and uh, to my surprise, he tapped. You know, I think that has to do with just a tight squeeze and, and, and fatigue. You know, maybe if he had more air at that time, he could have lasted a little longer. Um, and he fought it quite a bit. Uh, he's, he's, I know a lot of people said John Volante was fat. Uh, he looked out of shape. Why do he have to push off his knee to get up there? That man belongs in this heavyweight division. That's where he should have been the whole time. Um, let that man come back in shape. He's going to be hell on wheels to deal with. Uh, and uh, I take my hat off to him. My legs hurt. My face hurts. My shin hurts. Um, but I got it done tonight. You know, my back was against the wall. I'm on two fight skid. Um, and I could have lost my job tonight. Could have lost my job, and when you when you're the breadwinner and you and, and you got to feed your family, uh, and you're thinking about making a, maybe the biggest move of your life, to uh, really chase this dream and see if we can't make a title run. I'll be 34 next Sunday, um, so you do the math on how much time I have. So, you know, it, it, it always feels good to be here. Hopefully, I'm praying. Sean Shelby, Mick Maynard, Dana White, Mick, you my guy. Appreciate the fight. Uh, Hopefully I win that bonus tonight, you know, for making history again for the second time. So that'll really help me and my family. Well, you, didn't, you didn't lose your job. And the, immediately after you win a fight, everyone always asks what's next. It almost looks like you have what's next sorted out. Um, earlier today, after your fight, Tanner Boza said he'd had some sort of interaction with you at the pool. I don't think it was an altercation. It was just an interaction. But can you give us your version of that event? And also, were you drinking beer at the time? Um... I had a couple of beers, yeah. Of course, I have beer fight week. This is my thing. You guys watch Ultimate Fighter. It's no, it's no secret. Um, but anyway, uh, it wasn't an it wasn't an altercation at all. You know, I was just being friendly, like I always am, like I was with John. Me and John were friendly. Uh, maybe he was being a little standoffish, and he didn't like it. Um, and it is what it is. You know, everybody has to through the Ultimate Fighter. I realize everybody deals with these things differently, um, and everybody's not like me. Uh, and he's trying to do what I'm, I'm trying to do. He's trying to make it to the top. So, yeah, I wouldn't expect anything less. I, I, I take that challenge humbly, you know. Uh, going back to when I was offered to fight with him, you know, I was on a three-fight win streak. He was a debuter. You know, I'm looking to climb the rankings. You know, I didn't have time. If, if I can avoid it, I didn't want to fight a debuter. It's not dodging or ducking him. You know, I was trying to fight somebody else. And guess what? I think I fought Pavlovich instead, right? And I didn't win that fight. So... You know, it didn't work out for me. Um, but, yeah, you know, once I heal up, once I, get the, once I get my move out the way, I wish I could go and fight at Fight Island for real. 
my goal was to get in and out of here and hopefully get on the August 1st card if I was healthy, healthy. Um, and once Tanner said that, I was game, game. Uh, but, you know, take it slow, hopefully win the bonus, um, you know, to really set my family up to, uh, you know, to be, a, be comfortable and focus on my training and everything I need in Albuquerque. And, uh, man, you know, sky's the limit for me. You know, I, I'm with coaches with amazing minds. Um, think about what they did, did with me in three weeks. We changed and tweaked a couple things. I tried my best to keep all that consistent. And uh, I did a good job with more reps and more time. Psh, it's a wrap. What were you singing between rounds? Oh, I'm singing the, so my corner man, T. Billa, that song is not released yet. It's just, uh, it's a song that, that he kind of let me know what he was, you know, what, what was going on. And uh, I walk out to all his music, it's all my walkout music, and uh, he has, what, 30 some tracks released on uh, Spotify. So um, everybody can hear you in there. You got to have fun, you know. I take my job seriously, but if I'm not having fun doing this, why am I doing it? Why? For what? So um, I'm thankful for the UFC. Um, I'm thankful for how, how uh, cordial and nice everybody is. They treat me well. And uh, all I want to do is put on good performances, man. It's only going to get better. But just so you know, it went, I had a talk with my demons, because I did. I said, sorry, I must leave you. I don't mean to be misleading. And I'll come back if I need you. And that's it. But that's true, though. I, th I think you sort of touched on it uh, a little bit there with yeah. the pressure. But the emotion that clearly was showing on your face in that post-fight interview, was it about just the move? Was it about the two fights? What was it that was going through your head at that moment? Because I think that's the first time I've ever seen that uh, type of emotion come from you. I'm a very emotional person. You saw an Ultimate Fighter after I won the first time, you know. It's like uh, I try my best to put this face on and say, you know, there's no pressure. But, yeah, that shit was thick, very thick. Um, I try to turn, my, turn my, my nervousness and my butterflies into excitement through music. Um, and, uh, you know, getting dropped, I know I was in a tough place. You know, I was getting hit. I don't really remember a lot of it. Um, and to be able to not even finish with, with my striking, to be able to finish from the bottom with my jiu-jitsu is, is, is so sweet to me. You know, everybody, there's not a lot of heavyweights that do jiu-jitsu, and I'm one of them. Um, and it's just very sweet to me. You know, my, I, I never went to college, so, you know, I call, whenever I get my Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, that's my college degree. So uh, to come in here, fight at the highest level, to fight a veteran like Jean Vellante, um, I don't care if he was a light heavyweight. That man fought like a heavyweight. He's big like a heavyweight. Um, I just, you know, uh, I had a bunch of personal things going on leading up to this. You know, um, I had a gym switch. Actually, I didn't even mean to switch gyms, really. I was going out there just to get work in, but when I got out there, Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn kind of took me under their wing and, you know, penciled me in every day for time with each one of them on top of the, uh, you know, the heavy, all the heavyweights I got out there is probably six plus, which is unheard of, you know. You know, they're building, they're building a stable of stallions out there. And, uh, you know, I want to be part of that. And um, nobody really knows but me and that guy in the back of the room, T. Billa over there, um, you know, what I was really going through mentally. And, you know, we were able to put a lot of that to the side, get mentally strong. Uh, find confidence uh, in, in moments of weakness. And, uh, you know, we got it done tonight. We got it done tonight, and I keep my job. Um, yeah, I keep my job. You know, I left my corporate job to chase his dream. Um, damn it, it's coming again. I left my corporate job to chase his dream. And uh, I'll keep it alive. Thank you very much. Congrats on the win. That's all you guys got? Thank you.